sloth. When I think of this, um, obviously we think of the animal. But what is it? Is it really just about a sloth? I mean, a sloth is slow. It's slow to do things. It defines its, itself in a virtual laziness of sorts. Could be a lazy cat. You're just too lazy to get up, too lazy to face the world. And it brings about sheer boredom within us. A laziness. When we are lazy, we ask ourselves, is there a point to anything? Is there a point to what we do? Do we have to? Today? Now? I honestly think a lot of us are just tired. Depressed. Hiding in our darkness, our sorrows. Thoughts of suicide. Ending it all. How do these things happen? How does one get to being that lazy? Starts with rejection. We get to that point of rejection where it causes us to be lazy. The first people in your life are your family. I mean, I have to believe we're all born with a sort of go get them attitude, conquer the world, do everything you want to do, be happy and climb mountains and run and be with 20 friends. But the pe first people in your life are your family. And then you either become the black sheep, the pariah, because your beliefs conflict with theirs. But, you know, you try to obey the Ten Commandments as best you can. Then it's hard. I mean, maybe it starts out good between you and other people. But whether it's prejudice or whether it's just degradation or you, you find things about yourself you like and it conflicts with them. You know, when you want that, when they want you to eat that one cheesecake and you're on a diet or they want you to go uh, to flyer parties and you're working on your music or you're working on your Taekwondo or you're working on building a car and they don't like cars. It's always like you're going to be the pariah of not only your family, but the people around you who are your peers, which is which sucks even more. But for most of my subscribers who are males, there's nothing even worse than when the pretty girl rejects you. I mean, it doesn't even have to be blind dates or first dates. It could be just like when you're talking to them uh, platonically. I mean, maybe you're interested in them, but or maybe they're married, but you try to be good with them. You try to have good relations with them on some level. But any time a pretty girl walks out on us, males, uh, it's not a good feeling. It is not. That happened to me earlier this year when I was trying to speak to a woman who knew only Russian and didn't know much English. And she was married, but she, we just couldn't talk. And she, I don't know if she was offended by something I said. I try to be as cordial and professional, but it's like she walked out on me. And she was hot as hell, but that was still indignifying um, when we're talking in a room of people who are learning English from Mandarin. That's hard. I mean, nothing sucks more. I mean, forget, you know, trying to talk to a female on a, you know, emotional, platonic, or dating level. I mean, you know, whether you have a male or female interviewer, it's always horrible when you have bad job interviews. Uh, maybe you didn't tie your tie right. Maybe you said the wrong thing. Maybe you did the wrong thing. Maybe you just used foul language inadvertently, not to be cruel, but, you know, something goes wrong. Something goes tits up, or you have a three-page resume like I did when I was in my early 20s. Something goes wrong all the time, and you can never get those job interviews to work for you. Or worse than that, even if you do get the job, there's always some reasoning, whether it's the time, whether it's school, whether it's talking too much and your coworkers talk, uh, get back at you, difficult work environment, Everybody turns on you. I've made mistakes like this, okay? When I was, before I even hit 30, I was making stupid ass mistakes. I don't work those kinds of dead end jobs, flipping hamburgers and wrapping sandwiches. I got past that. I had to. But I get it. Some of you have kids. Some of you have to earn your keep. So you have to do the shitty fast food. You know, you have to say, you know, would you like fries or that? It's just so fucked up. I never asked that question. Others are forced to do custodian work. I, I took a class for building and grounds worker. Could never find jobs. It was too difficult. Or if you know what this is, you're stuck in the cubicles. You're an engineer. Or whatever it is Dilbert and Dogbert are supposed to be doing. It's kind of a joke. But hey, at least it's a little more dignifying. The loss of jobs, girlfriends, family, friends, people around you, things to do. You end up becoming that hermit. Hell, this whole virus is keeping us wearing masks. We're all hermits, each of us together, and yet we're all, you know, apart from each other. 
it gets to the point in distant future where we're going to build bungalows, you know, quick, quick build houses out of cheap materials, uh, non brick and mortar pods, and we'll all live separately from each other in little individual capsules. That's weird. Living alone has forced us to kind of take in other options, virtual reality, augmented reality. Ooh, a thing within a thing within a thing. Infinity. Or just a regular type of video gaming, whatever suits you. Is it possible to destroy sloth and laziness? What is that first step? How do we get to that success point? How is it possible? Well, first steps, I guess, would include what are your talents? What are the things you naturally know how to do? And then how do you push yourself a little bit further? And you may want to share that with people. So you share with people, you get their likes, you get their comments, you get them to follow you, you get them to be interested in you. You try the Skype, you try the Zoom when you meet females, or even just people you want to get to know. Uh, it's always a good step. It goes beyond texting and phone calls. And then the moment happens when you finally meet someone significant to you, whether it is the girlfriend or it is someone important in your life, that's the first step out of sloth. At least that's what I think it is. Um, like when Link meets Zelda for the first time since uh, she undid everything. So thanks for tuning in. We'll focus on another sin, but uh, find a way out of your laziness as soon as you can.